Hi everyone, this is Tammy at Snowstorm Crafts and welcome to part three series of taking one box and making it into two junk journals. So I have a box that's like this and on the first video I showed you how to take it all apart and cut it into two journals. So that's where I started and the part two series, we did the first one and made this journal. So this one's part two, and I showed you guys how to make this journal. Okay, and then today, and I'll make sure to put the links down below so you guys can come check them out. So the box of taking it apart was part one series. This is part two series on making this one. And today I'm gonna show you part three. And I'm gonna do a flap with it. And we're gonna make this one in this video. So if you could, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and you guys can see my next video when I post it. Like, comment, and share, and let's grow together. Okay, so let's get started here. Whoops, I'm gonna bump you guys. Make sure you guys are in frame. Okay. All right. So we got our box here, and we got a little flap. And what I wanna do today is I have everything cut I wanna do a coffee journal, which I thought was really, really cute. So I got everything cut out to fit. And what I'm using on the back is batting, which is just like a cotton batting. And you can either use that or you can use flannel or you can use like a receiving blanket or anything that has a little bit of bulk to it. Uh, I think it just gives it a nice, just quilted look when we sew it. It just gives it like a more of a plush when you rub it and stuff. It feels really nice. So, and, that, and, and also I like it when you glue it down when we, uh, cause we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew it first. And then when we come to glue it, you don't have to like finger smush it or anything and get your hands all smushy. You could just put it on and stick it and then it won't seep through. So there's a little tip and trick right there. So it just makes it so it doesn't seep through and you have big splotches of glue everywhere. Okay, so I just wanna kinda of lay it out to show you guys how it's gonna look here. So this is gonna be the front. And then this is linen that I cut from a skirt that I have. And it's one of those really long, just linen skirts with buttons all the way down. And uh, it just doesn't fit. So I was like, well, I might as well use it and make it material. So keep all your, all your clothing or anything or goodwill. If you see some good stuff, just look at it like material, you know? Look at it like some fabric that you can use and you get really good deals on it. So I did the same here and that's going to be the spine. And then, and then I wanted to show you guys too. I cut this one a little short on the side here. So I just took a sliver and did that. And I probably don't need to, but I just wanted to show you guys, you can kind of just set one here because as you sew it on and then glue it down, it'll stay. So you can kind of just piece it like that. Okay. And then that will be the back here. So it'll go like this, this, and then this is the flap, which I thought would be really cute. Just a little mocha. So that'll be the little flap that flaps around. So what we're going to do is go to the sewing machine and pretty much the same concept that we did on this one, but I will show you guys how I did it. And we're just gonna zigzag down and then do a straight and then zigzag and however you wanna do it and then just rotate and go back and forth. So I'll meet you guys at the sewing machine. Okay. So make sure everything's lined up the way you want it. And I'm gonna start here and do a straight stitch and a back stitch and go down. And then you can switch it over to a zigzag or whatever stitch you want. I'm gonna do that for a little bit. And then back to a straight stitch. And I just go down close to the bottom, stay like fill of the batting. And then I turn it. Go over about a half inch or so. Or however far you want. And then I'm gonna turn it to a zigzag. And then work your way back up. And then you 
just keep switching back and forth. And then just keep doing the same thing. And then put it, I like when I go across this way before I turn back up, I go back to a straight stitch. So like I do this part on a straight stitch as far as I want, and then I turn it, and then you can switch it to whatever stitch you want. That's just how I do it. Like, I can keep it straight for a little bit, and then go to a zigzag. And then back to a straight. So I'm just gonna do that all the way up and down on all of them. And then go over and then same thing. So just keep doing that all the way back and forth. All right, so we got it all sewn together. And just go through and cut off whatever ends that you don't want hanging off of here, just the threads. So I hope you guys are having a crafty day today and grabbing out your uh, extra leftover Christmas boxes and present boxes and just didn't know what to do with them. This is a great idea. You just uh, look at it and see what you can make out of it and see if you want flaps on it or, you know, uh, you could keep and do it like a side tuck flap and just so many different things you can do. And it's just fun to look at it and move it around and cut it open and just see what you can do with them. Because it's really nice to recycle, you know, and uh, reuse things and stuff. Just good for everybody. And it's a great time. I'm having too much fun doing this. So I hope you guys are having fun today, too. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take my Fabrifix glue... And it bonds uh, fabric, lace, leather trims, and more. So it does, uh, it'll be great just to kind of do a quick glue down on this. And I will do that in a time lapse. And I'm just gonna just take some glue and just smoosh it around, make sure you get the edges. And just, you don't need a bunch because we're gonna go over and do a zigzag all the way around all of it. So I'm just gonna get it, glue it all into its spots, and we'll go from there. So now we got it all glued down and we're going to go to the sew machine and I'm going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around and I'm just going to catch it just all the way around. And then I'm going to zigzag just down the sides right here, right there. And then right here just to connect this. So let's go do that. I'm gonna go ahead and sew this flap part down right here. So I'm just gonna do a zigzag along the seam, the fold there, just wherever it looks good to you. And just to tack it down. And then on the front flap here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna sew right along this part where it's all opened up. I'm just gonna sew that all together. All sewn together. As you can see, we did a bunch of stitch stitch, or <laughs> stitch stitch, a bunch of zigzag stitches and straight stitches and this is what it looks like on the inside. 
So then, like you can see what I did. I went ahead and I caught the edges. If you can see that. Let's make sure you see it. But I caught the edges all the way around the cardboard right there. So you just kind of catch the edges. And I did that all the way around and then I did down the middles right here just to attach all these flaps so you don't look in there and see the cardboard. So when you go like that, it's all just attached like that. Okay. So now I want to show you guys how to make a closure with a wine cork. <clears throat> Easier than you think. So we got a wine cork and that's what it looks like when it's closed which I think that turned out pretty cute. Okay. And what we're going to do is get our old serrated knife here, which is really just old and gross, but it's perfect for <laughs> crafting. And you're just going to take it and just kind of, I've showed you guys how to do this in other videos, but it's just such a fun way to do a closure. And I got like a whole box of them at Goodwill. Just a bunch of wine corks and I'm like, what in the heck am I going to do with wine corks? But I knew I wanted them. And this is one thing that I've been doing with them. So I just kind of do a, a line around it and then give it a good, just even saw. And that's why I like the serrated knife. it so much easier okay makes a little bit of mess but that's okay <clears throat> we like messes okay and it's kind of all messed up a little so this is just a sanding block that my husband got me at Home Depot and you can just take it and Give it a quick sand down there. And if you're not happy with it, you can always cut the other side here. So I don't know if I am happy with this one, but let's give it a chance here. I figure if I do this. Because you don't want it too thin, you know, and you don't want it too thick. So just find your happy medium here. Don't know how much it's gonna flake off. Yeah, it seems pretty sturdy still. Okay. So go ahead and do that and you just sand it down. I just don't want the rope to get caught on it. I'm probably overthinking it overdoing it but that's okay there we go I think that'll work so then you have it just smooth as you want like that and it doesn't have to be perfect you know such is life doesn't need to be perfect just as long as you're happy with it okay all right so now we're gonna go ahead and Get our poker tool and a brad. <clears throat> and I just do just a just a gold brad. Okay. And then we're doing this before we add the inside of our cover. Because we want to hide the brad. Okay? So just find your center here and just poke your hole. Pop it through, and there you go. And then we we'll just see where we want it. And I think it would be really cute to do it right on the C, because you know it's the word mocha. And I think it would be cute right on the C right there. The O would just, well, we could do the O. 
Let's see. But the C is right in the middle. But we could do the O. And just do it, tie it up here. What do you think? Let's do the O. I think that would be funny. Okay. I look cute. So now, I'm going to go ahead and take my Cropodile. And it does a 3 16th and a 1 8th hole punches right here. And it's an eyelet setter. So I will show you all of those. So we decided the O. Okay, so I'm going to do 3 16ths. And I'm just going to pop a hole right into the middle. Oh, you know what? Yeah, let's do 3 16 because I'm going to do a eyelet in there just to secure it. So pop it in there. And sometimes it doesn't get all the fabric, so I go and just cut a little bit more right there. Okay. And let's just see what color. Let's do green. Do some green. Oh, I was trying to show you guys. Do a little green. It matches. Even though you're not really going to see it, but we'll know. We'll know it's there. I just wanted to have an extra security here. Okay. And then you just take the pokey part and put it through the top and the flat disc on the bottom. And then you just press. We got mocha. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, let's see. How do we want it? And you don't want to do it too tight because we're going to have a rope that we're going to want to tie around it. So just for now, let's just loosely do it. It'll stay. Okay. So we got that done. That done. I don't think we need those again. And then I'm going to take my green rope here. Find the end of it. Okay. Wow. Making a big old mess. And let's see. See, just gonna we're gonna double it up. So we're gonna want it doubled. And I'd rather start off way too long than way too short. So let's see, what do we got here? Uh, maybe 30 inches. Just to because we're gonna tie it to it here and then wrap it around it. So we wanna make sure it'll wrap around the book. Plus do a twist and a dangle that hangs off of it. So yeah, yeah that's plenty. Okay, okay. Now, Make sure you guys were. I was recording because I would hate that to happen. Okay. Okay, let's think about it here because we're going to want it like this. And then when you do it, you're going to twist it around and then twist it like this. So, yeah, we want it to go that way. Okay. So just wrap it around. Get it around there and then just tie a couple knots just to secure it. So we're still having a bunch of rain here happening. Uh, we were supposed to get in Oregon, where I'm in Oregon, and it was supposed to get snow, but we never got any. Um, I don't know why I'm tying a weirdest knot I've ever tied in my life. Uh, so, 
That never happened, but we definitely got, I woke up today and just pouring down rain. Like, wow. But right now it's just kind of settling down a little bit, but just some rainy, rainy, rainy. Okay, that's, you know, that's what Oregon's all about, I guess, huh? So it's a perfect day to craft. That's what I decided. Well, every day is a perfect day to craft. Okay, so tied a couple knots, secured it, made sure this isn't super tight. Okay. And then it wraps around like this. And then it just goes a couple times, however many times you want to do it. And then we definitely have a long dangle here. So I want to probably not have it so long. And I want to do some beads on it. Just a couple of little dangly beads. And I got some of these too. Even though it's silver and that's gold, but that's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind mixing it up. Do a little mix up. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do is see where I want it. And then I'm going to tie a knot because I don't want the, I don't want the bead just flapping all over the place. So I'm going to secure it in spots that I want it to stay. So here we go. I'm going to do a knot up top. that I mean even if they're not perfectly lined up that's okay do one a little further down okay and then I'm gonna pop the beads on Let's do a couple here. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot at the bottom. Just like that. And then they stay where you want them. Well, unless you push really hard like I just did. But let me pop it back over that knot. So there we go. So just go ahead and do that, and I will do the next one in a time lapse. Our dangle happening, or I mean our closure with little fun little beads. And we don't have to have this that long. And I double knotted on the bottom because the whole, these beads are a little bit bigger, so it didn't fall through. Let's see. Go. And this probably will start fraying, but I don't think that's that bad, really. Or we could take our lighter here and just be careful <laughs> if you do this, just to kind of seal it. So just put it on a low flame and just do a quick seal and then it shouldn't fray so just do a low flame and quick oh yeah I have a little smoke happening so I think I have it so it shouldn't, there we go. Ta-da, little tip and trick there. So it shouldn't fray at the end. Okay. And then you can undo it. Ta-da. Now it smells like burnt rope in here. <laughs> Woohoo! So now what we're gonna do is add the inside. Okay. Right in the inside. I'm gonna turn that like 
that. And I got everything cut, ready to go. And all I'm doing is just gluing it down. I'm gonna have just the zigzag showing. I don't mind that at all. And I'll cut this to size here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get all this glued down and I'll do that in a time lapse. All right, so the inside is done. We got it all glued together. I think it turned out perfect. That's so much fun. And I just clipped this down just to get that brad stuck down in there. So I just kind of clamped them down a little bit. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is put a dangle on it. I'm gonna do that before I add the signatures. So. We're gonna use a crocodile. Do the three sixteenths. I'm gonna line it up in the middle. And pop a hole in it. get most of that fabric there. Sometimes it doesn't punch through that, okay. And then we're gonna do green again. Green is the theme. And put it through. Okay. And smash it down. all smashed down and what I got is just a cute little dangle here just with lace and stuff and some matching green and some red I think that seems to match it pretty nice and I got a bulb pin that I have beads on the other side of it over here so they won't come through so you can open it up and they won't fall out and I'm just gonna stick that back here and there we go. Got ourselves a little dangle. Okay, and then I am going to do the signatures. It's gonna be five signatures. It's gonna be five signatures and five pages each in it. So five of them stacked up on top of each other. So that's five and then five of each, so it's a hundred pages front and back. And this will be in my Etsy shop when it's all said and done. I should put it in today. And uh, <clears throat> if you guys come and just favor it and favor my shop or favor and push the little heart, that helps me out a lot. Or if you wanna purchase it, this it's a one of a kind. And I will have it in there for you guys. So I'll put the link down below. And I'd really appreciate it if you guys came and checked it out. So that'd be fun. So what I'm gonna do is I have a binding video that's down below. You guys go check out detailed how to do it. But I'm gonna do this in a time lapse and I'm gonna get all these in here and we'll do a flip through. Also, I forgot to tell you guys after I do this, put the signatures in, I have a surprise that I'm gonna put on the front of the book, of the journal. So there'll be a fun surprise that will add to the front of it. So that'll be fun. We'll do that after. All 
All right, so we got all the signatures in. Looking good. And then now I'm gonna put my dangle back on because when I was doing the signatures, I didn't want it in the way. So, pop it back on there. And then I wanna show you guys a fun little surprise on the front. Uh, I did it on the other one too, so I figured keep up with it and do it on this one too. So let's go ahead and tie this around. And then we'll do a flip through when I'm all done. So let's get that how we want it to look. Okay. And now I got these cute little butterflies that I made. And they're like just folded like an origami, but it's with a uh, fabric and they got little bead, little bead heads, or little beads. And what I want to do is make sure we got everything we want done because we're going to glue it. So, all right, you know, let's do a flip through first. That's a smart one. And then we'll glue these on. So we'll flip through. And then I also have a, another little surprise I want to throw in too. So I'm going to put this little tag. I made it out of uh, greeting cards and I'm going to do a video. I think that might be my next video is to show you guys how I do tags out of greeting cards. And uh, I'm going to, this one's going to come with it when you purchase it. So it's just a fun little tag and it's got just the matching on top. It's got a little tag thing on top. So there we go. And then you got your little thing sticking out like that. So it's cute. Okay, so now let's do a quick flip through. Um, this is just a packaging, uh, like paper that you get. And I went ahead and just cut it into size and I pressed it a little bit, but it's still got some wrinkle, but I figured why not recycle it? It's great, crinkly and nice. It's nice and thick. And then just some papers throughout. And I did some writ dye on this that I use like for my tie dye. So I did, I do that with my stencils here, some graph paper, uh, some pattern paper here. So it's really thin, but it's, it's really nice feeling. And then some gardening pages. That's one signature. And then I got some green packaging. And some more stenciling and some fun, uh, just some fresh start, just uh, pages to do, like crosswords and stuff. And then some fun coloring pages. Like here's a little word search. Okay, and then more stenciling. This is from my bead jewelry book. I think it's just so pretty. Some of the artwork is just really pretty to look at. Okay, so I got all that. And then the last signature. There's some more crossword. And then the last signature here. So it's pretty much the same stuff. That you, oh, and it's avocado and onion dyed paper in it. So it's nice and crinkly and cool feeling. And then some uh, more gardening pages here. And then tons of journaling space. And then more journaling space. So that's that. And you got some fun pockets on the back and one on the front here. Okay, so that's what it looks like inside. this just all wrapped up here and then now I want to go ahead and put the big one down here I thought that would look cute here and then the little one up here so it'll be on the flip when you flip it so let's go ahead and do that and I'm going to use my fabric fix glue and just give it a good amount of glue 
you want that baby to stick. Okay, and just wherever you want it. I don't want to cover up the word, so I'm just going up in the corner here. Like that. Okay, and then this one I'm going to put down here. I think I'm just going to go like that with it. Just kind of turn both sideways there. I need to clamp that one down. Let's go ahead and clip it for a second here. Just till it gets a good stick to it. Okay. And same with this one. Just glue in just the middle part right here. Okay. There we go. Just to give it a, make sure they stay on there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informational and got some ideas out of it. and. Maybe some ideas what to do with the little flip, you know, a little flip right here. And you can just look at your books differently and your, I mean, your boxes differently and just see what you can make with them. And uh, this is the end of the series. And we went ahead and did this one in series two. So if you guys want to check out how I did this one, just come check out the series two on how to make a two journals out of one box. So it was like this, and I made them into two. So we got this one, and we got the fun coffee one, which I think turned out really cute. I love the flip and the fold and the... So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and please, if you could, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and you guys can see my next video when I post it. Like, comment, and share, and let's grow together. And keep on crafting, guys. And have a great day.